Hello and welcome back to my daily coverage of the 2023 Tour Divide. Let's get a look, have a look at the map and see what's been happening on the second day of the race. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to focus at the front of the race for now, um, just until things are spread out a little bit more, um, and then I'm going to sort of try and um, dig into some stories further down as well. Um, Updates from social media and things have been a little bit sparse on the ground. There's been some really bad weather and to be honest, I think a lot of people have data for the USA or for their phones and maybe not so much Canada. Um, so I'm expecting as things settle, um, there'll be some more stories to, to dig, dig into uh, and also things will spread out and we'll be able to get a clearer picture of what's going on. But in the meantime, um, so yesterday we had Justina Slovaka and Ulrich Bartholomew's pushing on at the front and establishing a little bit of a gap um, into, into the States. Um, so they, they got to the border, um, I think it's just under 24 hours, um, and they had quite a gap over the rest of the field. Now, it's, reports are that the weather's been pretty, pretty bad up north. There's been quite a lot of mud, and um, you know that's really been slowing things down. Quite a few people stopped in Fernie um, overnight, which is kind of the, the only really sort of big town in in Canada um, on the route, um, so yeah, so a few guys at the front have pushed through. So it looks like basically the, our front three guys here: Ulrich, Eustinus, and Chris Burkard. If we look at the race flow here, it pretty much looks like they're the only guys that haven't stopped to sleep yet. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with Eustinus at the moment. I mean, it is. It's basically 1 a.m. local time, so I suspect Eustinus has now stopped. So uh, for those of you who are new to the you know the world of dot watching, um, you can see here that some of the um, the dots for the riders are kind of faded out. That normally means that the the track has sort of um, stopped for a while. So essentially, you can probably assume that they're sleeping at the moment. Um, however, sometimes if if it loses signal for whatever reason or like loses battery, that will also happen. But I think it's um, we, we've had quite a bit of that in the first um, day or so. Um, quite a lot of cloud cover and bad weather apparently which can affect the trackers uh, and it's not always great in that northern section um, but I think now we can probably assume given that it's one in the morning that these guys have stopped to sleep so it looks like Eustinus has stopped um, Ulrich's carried on um, and it looks like Chris Burkhard as well he is still rolling so you can see um, I'll just try and explain I'm not sure how many people here are, are used to, to dot watching and things, but uh, basically a flat line here is not moving, so evidently stopped. I think a lot of people here stopped in Fernie, and when you're moving forward, you can, um, you're like, the, basically the riders are, are moving um, along the course. So um, there was a few questions yesterday. There was a bit of a, like a, a slowing here in the route, and um, people were asking in the comments, why has that, that curve really gone down? And that'll be Coco Claims. So that's a really steep hiker bike um, in the Canadian section. It takes about an hour or so. So I suspect if you look at that, it's, it's about an hour's worth of slow walking speed. Um, and then once they got back on their bikes, they sped up. So that's how you analyze the, the race flow. Um, it's quite a useful tool just to see exactly what's going on and then read into tactics a little bit more. Um, so we'll come into what's gone on with the, um, you know, within the race, um, looking a bit at social media, and I've got a few messages actually from, from Eustinus, um, so that might help paint a picture. Um, but before we do that, um, we'll just have a little glance back down the field. Um, it's a little bit too early to make any real conclusions at the moment. Um, we're less than two days in, like, well, one day, 18 hours, according to the tracker. So you, you can't really draw many conclusions at the moment. We're just getting like the, 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 the picture starting to form. I suspect these guys here, we're, we're, we're looking at guys like Joe Nation, Ted King, just to pick out two names, and of course Lyle. Um, these guys have slept already. They're not a million miles away from the front of the race. Um, so this section here, we'll, we'll break down the route a little, little bit more shortly. But there's two big passes, Whitefish Divide, Red Meadow Lake, and they're all the other. They're all in the same side of it, and there's not another big pass until Richmond Peak over here. So, actually, they're um, they're not a million miles away. You know, that's what 50, 60 miles, two, three hours probably on the road. Well, maybe three or four in reality, but that's a big night's sleep. So, at the moment, um, there's some riders who are obviously playing it 
safe, you know, like guys like Tay King, he slept inside for two nights already. Um, Caleb there, he looks like he stopped in Columbia Falls. Uh, Leo, um, there's a load of little like houses and stuff like, uh, Leo looks like she stopped for the night. So last year I bivvied in just like a, a garage on the front of the house on the edge of Whitefish here. So she looks like she's resting well. Um, but the front three haven't really rested yet. Um, and once I come into the communications part in a minute, um, we will see that maybe they're, maybe they're pushing it a little bit too much. Um, back down the field, we've got a cluster of women uh, on Whitefish Divide here. Um, it looks like most of them are over the border now. Uh, Gail Brown um, just looks like she's at the top of, um, oh, I forget the name of the pass now. <laughs> There's too many names. Um, but we'll dig into the women's race later on um, once we get a clearer picture um, and once the, once the dots are spread out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, so before we go into the route a little bit more, um, I just want to say a huge thank you um, to Holy Fat. They, they have actually agreed to, to sponsor me and support these, um, these daily updates, uh, which, which is great because it means I can um, get a new microphone because I'm sorry if you're hearing my beard rubbing against the microphone. Um, hopefully I can get things, uh, the quality up as we progress. Um, but they do basically a range of... They do like nut butters and nut bars. You can see this one's been floating around the bottom of my pack for a while. Um, it's basically fat-free stuff. Um, sorry, <laughs> carb-free, fat, based on fat, um, which is a really nice slow-burning um, release, uh, slow-release energy. So I'd employ you to have a look at those. Um, linked is down below in the comments. Um, and yeah. Thanks again for the support. Uh, also, thank you for everyone who's commented in the, you know, on the videos. Um, I'm a bit overwhelmed actually by how many people have actually watched these. Uh, so keep the comments coming. If there's anything specific you want to see, or if you have any questions, put those in the comments. I will try my best. I'll probably do a question and answer video separately. Um, so yeah, fire away. Um, any feedback is welcome. So on to the actual. Um, like root analysis as such. So yesterday we covered the, the Canadian section and at the moment you can see uh, if we go back to the, the the track leaders, they're going on this this section here around the back of Flat Lake, Flathead Lake. Um, and it's this this bit this bit in here basically. Um, so you can see it's a bit of a flat bit before they, they start uh, going over Richmond Peak and then gradually the altitude's gonna start increasing over the next few days but the big challenges they've had across the border um, whitefish divide up here you can see uh, we're on ride with gps's excellent tour divide map so i, I would encourage you to use this um, if you want to dig into the route a little bit more i've put the link below in the, in the um, description so there's two passes whitefish divide here you can see using the elevation chart at the bottom tops up here uh, and then basically you go up over the hills and then back again. Now that's that's kind of how the tour divide works. You could just go down the highway or you could put in two massive climbs, touching on nearly 2,000 meters um, and, and, and back at the same place anyway. Um, I've got a bit of video from the 2019 tour divide. Um, so white fish divide looks a little bit like this. This is actually a little bit over the top. Um, Last year, 2022, there was quite a bit of snow. Um, it wasn't so bad on Whitefish Divide, maybe 20 minutes hiking. Um, 2019, it was totally clear. And then uh, Red Meadow Pass um, last year was horrendous. Seven miles of hiking. The, the lake was still frozen up here. But in 2019, we just flew by and uh, yeah, real fast, real fast moving. So yeah, so that's um, that's what the riders, um, or well, the bulk of the field is gonna be uh, coming across. Obviously the leaders are a little bit ahead of that now. Uh, and it looks like they, they resupplied um, in Whitefish and Columbia Falls. Um, again, it's a, these two places you kind of need to resupply on because there's not an awful lot in this area down here um, until you get to Avando, which is a very small town. There is a shop there, but it's, it shuts at like five. Um, but they are like super Tour Divide fans. So it's always good for a nice chat when you get there. Um, but then you're getting into the bigger terrain here. Now I've uh, I've heard, um, basically I'm in touch with uh, Eustinus. He sends me messages every now and again. Um, I gave him some help before the Tour Divide. Um, and he sent me a couple of uh, 
messages, which is uh, quite interesting to hear what's happening inside. Now, the quality is not amazing because it's just on a phone, but have a little listen. Um, first one was just after the border. There was a few comments that, saying that, you know, it looked like Justinus had got held up at the border. Wasn't the case at all. If you listen to this, you'll find out. Morning. Finally crossed the border, so got the internet back. Didn't had it since last evening, probably. Uh, we arrived to Farney four of us, Michael, Ted King, me and Uba. Uh, me, Michael and Uba stopped at 7-Eleven, Ted went for something else. But Michael was freezing, so he wanted to warm up. And then me and Uba left. And since then, so we were riding through the night, yoing each other. I uh, arrived at the borders first, but I chose to use the restrooms there to refresh myself. New bibs, wash the face, and everything. So now I'm ready for the next day. Morning. So, yeah, it sounds like um, Justinus and Ulrich have, have kind of been the same pace, uh, but Justinus, he, he just took a little bit of time to look after himself. I mean, he's not slept yet. Um, well, he might be sleeping now, but until this point, he hasn't really slept. Um, and he just took the time just to use the toilets and the restrooms at the border crossing, you know, put some fresh bibs on, clean himself up, and that can really, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's at least a two-week race. At the moment, they're probably on like 14 to 15-day pace. That's a long time, um, and you've got to look after yourself. Um, and then listening to this next one, um, I do start to question whether Ulrich might potentially be pushing too hard, too early. Um, let's have a little listen and see. I caught, I caught Uber pretty fast after, after, after I texted you. He was totally empty, riding uphill, and he actually was standing still and looking at the ground and <laughs> didn't want to go anywhere. So, got him going, but I had that stupid puncture now, uh, he waited until I fixed it, so now we'll, we'll have a bit of food in whitefish, and we'll carry on. So yeah, that is, um, that's quite interesting to hear, and also quite revealing, so so, Auric, so Justinus caught Auric and he was just stood there staring at the ground, obviously blown, run out of food, um, which less than two days in is not necessarily a good sign. Now, I'm not saying that that's the end of Auric by long means. He's a super strong guy, but I just wonder, is he just pushing it a little bit too much, a little bit too early? Sounds like Justinus has also had a couple of problems, um, a bit of a puncher. Um, so, yeah, so those guys got the gap early, but it just goes to show this is a tour divide. Anything can happen um, and anything will happen. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. Um, so I've also got a few little updates from social media. Um, so Joe Nation, he's a guy that um, I touched on. Um, I think he's a bit of a dark horse for this race. Um, he he had some GPS issues. Um, so yeah, crossed the border yesterday. Um, so he stopped in Fernie. He's been stopping for meals. Um, so obviously that was probably uh, Eureka. Gone from McDonald's. Um, and then he's had a standoff with a grizzly bear. So uh, yeah, bears and stuff. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people get worked up about bears on the Tour Divide, um, especially from Europe, because you know we, we don't have bears and stuff. Um, I've, I've seen a few. The first year I didn't see any. Last year I saw like 10 bears. Um, I think it depends a lot on conditions. The first year was really dry. So a lot of the, the, like the grazing and the food for them is higher up off the tracks. But last year there was a lot of snow and that kind of, you know, they can't get the food under the snowpack. So they come lower down and then that's when, you know, humans and bears, they're in the same area. That's when um, issues can happen. But yeah, Joe looks like he's just moving along. And I've also heard that he's, he has some GPS problems. He's now navigating off his phone. Um, which might slow him down, but sometimes being forced to slow down makes you faster in the long run. Um, Alex Howes, again, we talked about him at X-Pro. Um, he's, he's riding a gravel bike, 45 mil tires. I will do a bike check video separately in a few days' time. Um, I'll wait until, you know, the race is kind of spread out a bit and um, I'll pick some key bikes um, from riders and have a look. If you've got any suggestions who you want to, who you, whose bikes you want me to look at and analyze, 
far away in the comments. Um, but he's cut his tire. Looks. I don't know if he's. Um, looks like he might have plugged it. Um, I can't see whether he's had to thread it up. So yeah, he's probably going to have to stop get a new tire. I imagine somewhere in Whitefish um, is going to be the place to do that. So that slowed him up as well. Um, let's also have a look at. Ulrich's video. So this was just after the border. Um, so like a best part of a day ago now. Just bear in mind though, Justinus's um, second phone message would have been after this. So let's have a little look, see what Ulrich has to say. Um, so this would have been crossing into the States. Yeah, good morning from uh, the United States. Just uh, crossed the border of Canada and the US. Uh, within uh, 24 hours. The night was uh, pretty wild, a bit tough and rough, as you can see in my face. And um, as me, everything looks like everything is covered in mud. And uh, yeah, some uh, parts, my shoe is broken, some parts on the bike are broken, but uh, I guess nothing what will stop me, at least not now. So yeah, um, that is, that's quite revealing actually. So um, some, he's broken his shoe, I imagine it's like the buckle or something like that. Um, and some parts on his bike, I mean he didn't, didn't go into details, but I mean, I do wonder if they've been pushing quite hard. I mean they're on, they're almost matching Mike Hall's pace. Now bear in mind, Mike set the, the record on Tour Divide in 2016. I said it was 2019 yesterday, but my brain was just being a bit fuzzy. Um, and they're pretty much, well, Ulrich certainly is, is, is matching Mike's time at the moment. In 2016, the conditions were perfect, and the course was an hour quicker. They didn't, they didn't do Coco Claims, which is a big hike bike I mentioned earlier in Canada. So they must be pushing hard to, to be matching Mike's pace, and I just don't think it's going to be sustainable. Uh, in 20, 2016, I think Mike basically pretty much rode through to Helena and stayed in the hotel here. I do wonder if Ulrich, I mean, I, I, I know him, I know him, I'm, I don't know him very well, um, but I know he's quite sort of spreadsheet driven and he'll have plans and he'll know exactly where the stops are and where he'll be at each time for a given average speed. Um, I suspect he's gonna push through or try and push through to Helena, um, potentially Lincoln, um, and then have a, like a real big sleep um, so I think this this gap he's getting, um, I don't I don't think it's necessarily as big as it looks. Again, Eustinus looks like he has stopped now for the night. Um, let me just see if I can uh, see if his tracker has shown as a uh, him stopping overnight or not. It doesn't show just yet. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's interesting. I think I think we're going to see um, a lot of changes still. It's by far, you know, from a done, done deal. And I think think these guys in that mid pack are going to start catching up. Um, so yeah, that's my little dive into there. And of course, no one really cares about the front of the race because there's Mario the dog. Um, so just want to give a shout out. Uh, no updates as of yet. Um, but Myra and John are riding the. Tour divide together. Um, so yeah, aiming to be the first or the fastest dog to finish the Tour divide. Um, so yeah, Myra is just sitting in the back there and running along on some of the climbs, I suspect. And the two of them are doing the Tour divide. Um, so I'll try and do some updates from them as the race progresses. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I've got today for you. Um, sorry, a bit of a ramble at times, but uh, yeah, quite a lot to talk about. So join me again tomorrow and let's see how this race is progressing. Don't forget to like and subscribe, drop your comments in the bottom. Um, big thank you to the guys at Holy Fat and all of you guys for watching and supporting what I do.